Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Today we're looking at simplifying radicals with variables. This is very similar to the other square roots with variables lesson, um, only I redid it with a new mic, so hopefully the audio is a little bit better on this one. Same example, same basic video, just again, hopefully better audio um, because I did get some complaints about the audio in the other one. So some things to remember, things that are covered in previous and other lessons that you will need to know to be successful in this one. The square root of x squared is equal to x. All right, because x times x is equal to x squared. This works for, um, for other higher exponents as well. The square root of x to the power of 4 is x squared because x squared times x squared will give you x to the power of 4. And this works for, again, all other higher exponents. Basically what you're doing is you're taking the exponent and dividing the exponent by 2. Take the square root of any variable with an exponent. You just take the exponent and divide by 2. You'll need to know that as we move forward. Again, that was explained in previous lessons, but I just wanted to review that as well. The square root of 8 when we're trying to factor a square root that's not a perfect square, you can't take the square root of 8, you'll get a big long decimal. So we try and factor that. To do that, what we do is take a factor that is a perfect square. So 4 is a perfect square. That's why we use that factor. And you'll see why that matters here in a second. You can take the factors and make them their own separate square root. And then we'll take the square root of 4, the numbers that multiply together to give you 4, which is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so the square root of 4 is 2. And then the other square root symbol remains the same. So whenever we're trying to factor a square root that's not a perfect square already, you have to look for factors that are perfect squares. Again, this is covered in more detail in a different lesson, but just to, so that you're aware of it, we will be using this um, as, we, as we move forward. So we're going to put all those ideas together when we factor square roots or radicals with variables. Here we go. We have 75x to the power of 3. And we're going to factor this into perfect square factors. 25 is a perfect square. 5 times 5 is 25. x squared is a perfect square. Whenever you have an odd number exponent, you just take the largest amount of even numbers that you can and put that extra one kind of off to the side because you can't factor the square root of x. We'll give each of these terms their own separate square root symbol and solve the ones that we can. We can solve the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of x squared is x. So you see that right there and there. And then what we can do is kind of join them together for our final answer, where we put everything outside of the square root symbol together, so our 5 and our x, and everything inside the square root symbol, 3 and the x, remains inside the square root symbol. So the square root of 75x to the power of 3 is 5x times the square root of 3x. Everything we can factor, we factor. Everything we can't, we leave inside of that square root symbol. Let's do another one. 64x to the power of 4. 64 is a perfect square. x to the power of 4 is a perfect square. This example is actually pretty nice for us because we can take the square root of 64 and get 8. We take the square root of x to the power of 4 and we get x squared. So our final answer is going to be 8x squared. 64x to the power of 4 is a perfect square, including the variables and exponents. All right, that's a perfect square. If we take 8x squared and we square it, you get 64x to the power of 4. So that's an example where we have the perfect square of, or the square root of a perfect square. Now we get this kind of a question. With this one here, what we're going to do is, it looks a lot more complicated, but really, we're just going to take it step by step and do all the same things that we did before. That 3 on the outside just means 3 times this whole amount. So we're just going to leave it outside. We're going to do the same thing. Factor 40 into being a factor of a perfect square, 4, and 
a factor, 10. 4 is the only perfect square factor that we're going to be able to work with there. Our x to the power of 10 is an even number, so we leave it the same. y to the power of 6, 6 is an even number, we'll leave that one the same. And z is by itself. Let's give each of these their own separate square root symbol and factor or take the square root of every single one that we can. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x to the power of 10 is x to the power of 5. Remember, we're just dividing that exponent by 2, and then we get rid of that square root symbol. Square root of y to the power of 6 is y to the power of 3, and the square root of z remains the same, square root of z. We'll join together everything that's outside of the square root symbols, and that's when we deal with our 3. Because we have our 3 there, we're going to multiply now 3 times 2, which gives us 6. And then we multiply our variables together, x to the power of 5, y to the power of 3. And then our 10 and z remain under the square root symbol. So this is how we would solve this type of question, all of the steps here. Again, you factor that number, you use the even exponents for your variables, and then you put everything that's an odd-numbered exponent, you kind of put that off to the side. And this is the step for factoring square roots with variables, or in other words, solving radicals with variables. Hope that was helpful for you. Hope the audio was a little bit better. Have a wonderful day.